talked about uh, building the new process uh, flavor for, at, for the um, SOC. And then this chart shows what it means. We have two product lines. The upper one, uh, the performance microarchitecture, targeted for Xeon and core-based products. The lower one is the low-power optimized microarchitecture, you know, the Atom product family. And this is kind of a version of our TikTok model. And if you look at the upper bar, you see that we have Westmere and Sandy Bridge as the two products on our 32 nanometer node. And we see, see Ivy Bridge as the first product on 22, and Haswell now as the, the optimized design on 22 nanometer. So um, what, what we're still doing is driving the silicon nodes at two year intervals per Moore's law. We have the traditional TikTok model up at the top, and we're using the ticks like Westmere and Ivy Bridge to drive uh, the silicon node. And Ivy Bridge remains on track for Intel's production uh, late this year and for system intros early next year, uh, where you'll see uh, the range of, of uh, notebook and desktops based on Ivy Bridge. And then, of course, Haswell the following year. If you look down to the lower, uh, if you will, swim lane on this chart, you can see that, you know, today we're in production on Atom with this core called Bunnell that is at 45 nanometer. Uh, and as we go forward, we're moving to a core per generation. So we have a, an optimized core for 45, and then a new core design for 32, another new core design for 22, and then a, a core optimized for 14. It's a little bit different than TikTok. It's a, it's a new core optimized each generation. And then we'll build a number of SOCs around that core. But the important point on this foil is that uh, if you look at the 32 nanometer node, uh, it's going to be, I'll say, close to two years from the time that we introduce 32 nanometer on the core in Xeon until the time we actually have that in production uh, on our SOC family. Our goal is in accelerating the atom processor uh, family is to pull that, uh, is to reduce that gap. It shouldn't be two years. It should be, you know, as close to zero as possible. So as we go to 22 nanometer, we're going to, uh, if you will, get half of that gap, and we expect to have atom-based products on 22 nanometer uh, in our roadmap in 2013, you know, after we have you know, Ivy Bridge in volume in 2012 uh, in products uh, shipping. And at 14 nanometer, our goal is to close the gap to the smallest possible uh, time delta to, to introduce two products between uh, the core and the atom. So you can see that we're moving quickly through the nodes on Atom to be able to get the benefit of the, the silicon technology earlier in the cycle versus previous. And of course the question is, well, why? What, what's changing here? When we first introduced Atom, it was thought of, generally speaking, as a, a lower end, should be lower cost, et cetera, and performance was not the essence of the product line. But as we shift it into smartphones and tablets, we really do care about performance. We care about the energy efficiency of the new node, and so we have a strategic need to get advantage, and so we're doing this step uh, to accelerate. If you take that roadmap and you say, what does it mean if you just click in on the Atom product line? It means a new process node in volume once a year for the coming three years. And for those of you who followed us closely through uh, what we did in, in our processor graphics or integrated graphics for Intel, we took a similar approach. You know, graphics five years ago was, you know, good enough is okay. Now, uh, we, we've, when we realize how critical that is and apply the latest technology, latest design, we've been able to make dramatic steps forward in the capability of our uh, graphics and media uh, on our uh, mainstream products. We're undertaking a similar kind of effort with this change uh, to the way we develop the atom processors. So we're pretty excited about it, and we've gotten uh, our SOC teams lined up to do this, and we've built the, the plans of our business groups, like the uh, ultra mobility group that's doing the phones, and our netbook and tablet group that I'm in uh, for our uh, tablet product line and our netbook product line to follow this roadmap and to, to go bring this benefit to market uh, over the next few years. So not just the product line that we've changed, 
We've actually changed how we go about doing the designs. And so I'm showing you a picture that's a, I'll call it a cartoon of an Intel organization. That's the way we've operated up until now. On the left, we have the core slash Xeon development team developing client processors, server processors, and chipsets for both. And a separate organization developing <coughs> Atom SOCs. And I'll start off and say it was kind of necessary to put the Atom folks off into their own development area to begin and get the Atom processor going and get and kind of demonstrate what that family can, can achieve. And we've now gotten to the point where Atom is getting more mature. We've actually shipped more than 100 million Atom processors. So we feel we have enough momentum there that we're, and, and, and our, our product strategy has Atom so important in uh, phone and tablet that we're kind of uh, I'll call it embracing that more into the mainstream and we're, we're doing a paradigm change in the way we do development. So we've recently shifted our development structure to have uh, the best of both worlds. The teams that have all the experience in executing TikTok and delivering Adam and Burr for, the, for the last few years and the teams that have kind of cultivated this SOC methodology, the low power Atom cores, etc. are now kind of recombined into one larger design organization with the idea that the, the lines between uh, traditional processor and SOC are blurring. Moore's law just says we can integrate more and more and, and those things are trending more toward uh, a system on a chip kind of design. And also we want to make sure that we have the very low power capability and the power, the fine grained power management from Atom available to us in you know, the mainstream. So we've talked about uh, design and architecture changes for Haswell at the platform level that are going to allow us to achieve a 20x uh, improvement in standby time and that's a combination of the way Haswell is designed and, and some of this uh, power management architecture improvement we're going to go put in place.